show you what I got. All right, there's the jig bore, SIP. There is no ID tag that says what model the jig bore machine is, other than, you know, on the uh, the casting it says uh, SIP. But anyhow, the uh, the travel on the cross rail, you can see that it's 24 inches. And the travel on the uh, the uh, the table, which is I guess the y-axis, 32 inches. Um, what else do I got to show you guys? Minor repair on the cover um, for the dial. It was cracked, and two pieces were chunked out of it, and I got it brazed back together. Uh, always like brazing for cast iron. So that's 100% now. Um, just take. I had the table uh, moved all the way back and the covers off the, the inverted V-way and the flat way. Just cleaning everything, uh, loose paint, getting loose paint off. And uh, here's the, uh, my parts tank, the, uh, the, the covers for the waves. But anyways, um, let me show you some of the stuff with the tapers. So the little head, which has two inches of stroke. Um, let me run this down here. I got a Jacob's Chuck on there. That's it, two inches of travel. Um, that is um, a watchmaker's, what's it called? The WW Series 8 millimeter watchmaker's lathe collets is what that takes. So that's an adapter from uh, WW 8 millimeter watchmaker's collet to a, it's actually a threaded arbor. I'm going to make one that's not threaded. So I can go uh, from that uh, watchmaker's collet to the uh, uh, Jacob's taper and maybe get like a little 3 8 Albright chuck. Um, it's interesting. Let me kind of zoom you back. So where is it? The, uh, the draw bar, you can see it right there. The draw bar that goes through down um, and retains the watchmaker's uh, taper. It's, it's interesting. The thread is... Uh, 0.275 by 40 threads per inch. So maybe the watchmaker crowd can identify that as like common, but I guess there's a metric thread and an American thread, and that's the American. But anyways, so so what I got here, there's the draw bar for that. So the main spindle, start cranking it down here. Sorry if I'm shaking the camera. See. The adapter actually comes, it goes up in the spindle by like two inches. So if I come down, okay. So there's there's the spindle, there's the bearing nose, this uh, the nose, and there's this where the accessories get inserted is that right there. You can kind of see. So this is an adapter to ER40 collets. And the spindle is Morse taper number three, three Morse taper with a 3 8 16 draw bar, American thread. So I go, uh, and my ER collets, my ER 40s go up to an inch. Then I've got a full 23 piece set. So that's awesome. I can use uh, ER collets there. I've got to get um, some shanks for the boring heads and maybe some all bright uh, Chuck or Jacob's Chuck Arbors. Actually, I got one. Where is it? Yeah, I got a 5 8 all bright Chuck. And that's what it is. It's the 3 8 uh, coarse thread. Um, I think this is too, I don't know, J6 or something. Uh, taper. So, anyways, that's the head. And, okay, so the collets. Um, what else? Oh, this is interesting. So I've got it down on the floor, and I got it under four by fours, um, so I could move it around my pallet jack. But anyways, I found out I'm up to the cross my, my uh, so 
Sorry if the light's blowing it out. The elevation screws for the uh, Z-axis are hitting the ceiling by like, uh, you can see this. I, I can go another like four inches. So if I drop my um, machine off the four by fours, I can get another uh, four inches of you know vertical travel and then my uh, lead screws won't hit the ceiling. Sorry if that blows out with the light. But anyways, but um, this is such a cool machine. You know, the mechanism. I think it's oily, man. The whole thing's got, I mean, it's a good thing. It's got oil dripping all over. There's the gearbox. And uh, this is interesting. So that's the way protection guard. And this one, it's kind of neat. Somewhere in the past, somebody broke this. See, this is cast one piece and somebody broke this and repaired it with a piece of uh, steel and this is fit just perfect you know there's actually some bolts you probably can't see maybe you can so the three allen screws that somebody put underneath to try and repair it fabulous job and there it is um it's interesting they got the fitting perfect of the steel piece to the 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 weight protector but the holes didn't line up there's only two screws in it so i had to take and mill this hole i think 45 thousandths this way and this hole 30 thousandths that way so i had to you know they're eight millimeter holes, so they use a five sixteenths end mill, and then the heads are half inch. So I had to go through a lot of fiddling around to make that nice and better and perfect. And and as you can see, I'm using uh, Allen head metric screws. I used to have, you know, uh, slot head. I mean, you can trust me; they're slot head screws. And I know they're original. And my Brown and Sharp 13 grinder used slot heads because Brown and Sharp made all their own screws. I'm going to keep these screws because they're nostalgic and this machine is probably from the 1930s. But uh, I like the Allen heads better. That way I can use an Allen wrench and take it off instead of you know messing around with a, uh, a funky screwdriver. I had to use like you know a high leverage angle screwdriver to take it off. So anyways... So I got that off. Um, you see the flaking is beautiful on this thing. There is like zero wear on this guy. You can see when the light hits it, the beautiful scraping on this inverted V-way. I mean, this, this machine is in, I would say, if not perfect condition, absolutely excellent condition. So, sorry, I got my rags all over what are these are these locks for the screw are these locks for the screw the screws under here you know it's just a cover a shield so I'm wondering if you tighten those if those are screw locks because when they go around here this the cross rail has locks you know one there one the other side and it's got a screw lock for uh, the screw on the cross rail, you know. So, so the reason I'm asking are are them maybe locks for the 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 screw on the table is because I don't think the you know the table does have a lock. The table's got this lock. But see, look at my boring mill. Um, this is the Giddings and Lewis. So the table for the Giddings and Lewis, my flashlight, um, which I cleaned by the way. I finally got this all cleaned down and I stoned it twice with different grit stones. I wiped it down with phosphoric acid so that I guess that's iron phosphate that's a little bit almost like a black sheen to it. Um, yeah, so minor uh, 
hits, but I mean, this is, it looks worse than it is. Um, for a machine this old from like, I think 1946, this is like pretty minor. Oh, but anyways, so these lock the gib um, on this table. And I know that's not a gib. It's it's for, it's probably like a, a double lead screw nut. But it is interesting that Giddings and Lewis decided to put them there. And maybe, I don't know. I'm just kind of drawing conclusions. If you guys know what them are for on the, uh, the SIP, kind of, let me go back in the front here and zigzag my tightly spaced chop. Yeah, let me know what you think those are for. Maybe they're just actual tightening bolts. But man, for the nut, just like this plate, the oil cap cup, you know, whatever. It's kind of interesting. Oh, so based on the travels of 24 by 32, I think this machine is an SIP uh, number 5B. I don't know if this is a number 5 machine. But it looks bigger than a four, according to all the literature, literature I saw online. So, I don't know. But I'm very, I'm totally enamored with this machine. This thing is so cool. I love it. I'm going to do some really cool work with this. Um, one of the things, oh. So there's oilers on the top rail, you know, like uh, you know here and the other side. So I bought this. Uh, it's it's a, it's an engine additive. I've got Vactra number two. So I bought this Lucas, I guess Motor Honey. It's really thick. Um, so I'm putting that in the lubricators on the top rail, just because it just seems to run out everywhere. Um, maybe it's just a little thicker, you know. But anyways, so yeah, Lucas for that. Um, I don't know, I just like this uh, machine so much. I think my next step, yes, I'm going to finish the Gorton, get those sprockets in there. That's an upcoming video, I still got the uh, a hole in the knee. <laughs> Anyhow, so this is uh, the, the apron for the uh, Colchester. I need to put, I don't need to, I want to put some extensions from the oil galleys. And I want to drill and tap eighth inch pipe thread ports here and here so they come up and connect into these galleyways. Actually, I think, I'm, yeah, it's gonna be on the other side. It's gonna be there and there. But same concept, I'm gonna drill in here, but I don't have the daylight per se. Sorry, boxes of rags um, on the Gorton. So I might add it up sending, setting, sending the apron up here on my new, uh, my new toy, the SIP jig bore, because that, that's got plenty. Under the rail with the lead screw is able to uh, clear the ceiling. I think I got 28 inches from the spindle nose to the table. So that, that's a good amount of Z. But anyways, I just thought I'd, uh, you know, give you guys a little bit of update. Sorry for uh, not updating sooner, but uh, just been cleaning on this machine. The uh, SIP number five, I think, jig bore, inducers shop.